Um, he's awaiting a third, so he designates himself as ABD, um, and uh, all but dissertation on, on his uh, final degree at Harvard. He's also the chaplain of the Muslim Islamic, the Harvard Islamic Society, um, and he will be moderating this panel, which is comprised of uh, Sheikh Nizam Yaqubi, um, Mufti Barkatullah from, from England, and uh, Dr. Aznan Hussain from Malaysia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, you can. Very good. It's my pleasure to serve as a moderator for this, the first of several, I believe, um, Sharia scholars, Sharia scholar panels. Um, the presence and involvement of experts in Islamic ethics and law and the application of the traditional Islamic disciplines of Islamic ethics and law to contemporary finance is certainly one of the distinguishing, if not the distinguishing feature of Sharia compliant finance. The primary institutional feature through which the involvement of such experts is seen and felt inside of the sector is the Sharia Supervisory Board, Sharia Review Board, known by other names uh, as well. Um, since the beginning of the sector, referred to earlier by Sheikh Nidham Yaqubi and by Sheikh, uh, Aznan, Sheikh Dr. Aznan Hassan and others, since the beginning of the sector as a sector, there have been a number of evolutionary paths that the Sharia Supervisory Board has taken. Some of the best practices associated with Sharia Supervisory Boards, their interaction with the other players, both within the organizations that they advise and monitor and audit, as well as among themselves, uh, issues of standardization, best practice adoption, and the like will be among the issues uh, uh, that we uh, uh, address in other panels. During this panel, the intention is to um, discuss um, the development of Islamic finance um, in North America, um, particularly as it applies to a number of practice areas, retail banking, real estate funds, private equity funds, and the Sharia compliance, Sharia um, compliance standard related issues associated with um, the anticipated expansion in the market. Um, Sheikh Nidham Yaqubi has been introduced to you. Um, uh, he has, in addition to being my teacher, which is the least of his concerns, um, various points of contact with the sector and is one of the leading Sharia experts, the leading um, uh, Islamic ethicists and legists in this space. His bio, or a portion thereof, is present for you, and he has been introduced earlier. Mufti um, uh, Barakatullah is a Sharia scholar who is active in a number of domains, um, primarily in the UK. He is known to the UK community in past and outside of the UK community for a number of community concerns, um, importantly among them being his participation in the system of arbitration panels that are active in the UK. He is he's sitting as a um, arbiter um, as a judge on the Sharia um, um, arbitration panels is among the many important services that he offers to the community. He's a member of uh, several Sharia um, boards and has been active on the speaker circuit um, and in advocating the role of Sharia compliance inside of the sector. And um, Sheikh Dr. Aznan Hassan comes to us from Sharq al-Aqsa, <laughs> the far east, from uh, Malaysia, where he is a prominent and active member of the Sharia Advisory Panel, panel for the Securities Commission and other um, government uh, uh, recognized uh, um, regulatory bodies going to Sharia compliance. Um, we'll begin by presenting, um, getting the response of the panels on uh, several questions that they can use if they wish to guide their comments 
and then we'll, we'll just proceed from there in a roundtable uh, format. The first question that we might ask are, what are the most significant or the most noteworthy issues related to Sharia governance or Sharia compliance that may affect the expansion and the adoption of Sharia compliant financial services in the North American setting? What, what are some of the best practices, standards, that have been adopted and are fairly established where Sharia compliance is more mature that those who want to, uh, want to continue to expand the market inside of the North America should be aware of from the point of view of uh, Sharia compliance. Jazakumullah khaira. Shaykh Nidhami Al-Qubi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. The well, I think, uh, you know, uh, there is no need to reinvent the wheel, as you say here, uh, because uh, mm, uh, lots of time, effort, and uh, energy, and resources have gone into developing what is the, the minimum basic requirements. Uh, and this is available now in a document which is very well known and respected among both Sharia scholars, regulators, bankers, everyone. And I mean the standards which are the AWOFI standards, the Accounting and Auditing Organization for the Islamic Financial Institution. Uh, uh, the Sharia Council of AWOFI, which constitutes of more than, of about 18 members, and also it is going to be expanded of different scholars from different jurisdictions and from different geographical locations, which is chaired by uh, Mawlana Sheikh Taqi Al-Uthmani, Hafizahullah. And uh, um, over the years, uh, these standards have gained uh, uh, respectability, and um, uh, many uh, jurisdictions, regulators, are aware of them. And in fact, it has even been mentioned in legal documentations internationally as a, a compliance source or governing source when, when Sharia is mentioned. Because one of the difficulties was when the name Sharia was mentioned in the contracts or in governing clauses, that the judges used to say which Sharia or according to what law or codified or so and so. So now it is uh, qualified and it is mentioned that uh, the Sharia interpretation as it is mentioned in the AWOFI standards, for example. So this is a good start for anybody who wants to start to have an insight and have a historical development uh, of these products. And um, the, also for the new scholars who come into the field, they should be aware of previous research because uh, that is the good practice of any subject matter of, uh, or any dissertation. There must be a review of the previous literature. So this is the, pre the, the, the previous efforts that have been done, um, and tremendous time and effort. Each standard takes two to three years to develop. It goes through the process of a research paper, and then uh, that research paper is debated in subcommittees with the researcher, and after it is accepted or rejected or, uh, <coughs> or, or some amendments are requested from the researcher, after that the standards are uh, derived or, uh, and uh, abridged from the paper in a standard uh, setting format which is known uh, and given to the researcher. And <coughs> after that, that standard, that draft standard is uh, debated in subcommittees, and after that, uh, the subcommittees finish the work. It goes to the High Sharia Council, which deliberates. It used to deliberate two times a year, once in Mecca and once in Medina. And now we have three times a year also in Bahrain because of uh, lots of uh, standards which are waiting approval. So, um, and uh, after it is debated in the Sharia Council, and. Uh, 
uh, read carefully, uh, it might be approved, it might be rejected, it might go back to the subcommittees and research committees and so on and so forth. 